Hey, welcome. My name is Matthew Peterson. I am a trainer at Pragmatic Works. We're located up here in Northeast Florida. And I do a lot of training on Power BI and Power Apps. And so for this video for the week, I wanted to bring you the sum function within Power Apps. Now in Power BI, we use sums all the time. Excel, we use sums, but Power Apps also do, does sums for us as well. Uh, and there's a few ways that you can use this to your advantage. And I wanna show you a few different use case scenarios. So let me give you a setup first before we get into the app. Uh, as a former Algebra and Algebra 2 teacher, I would have competitions with all of my classes where based on student behavior, they would get points for their class. Whether if it was a late homework, we would lose points. If you're tardy, you would lose points. Perfect scores on tests, you get points. If you help out other students, you get points. Uh, if you correct me as a teacher, you get points if I made a mistake. Uh, and what I would do in the classroom is anytime that would happen, I would just go up to the whiteboard, put a plus 10 or a minus five. At the end of the day, I'd have to go down, do all of my tallies, uh, and that was it. But then I would forget who got what points, and sometimes the students wanted to know that information as well as keep track of what classes are doing the best. Well, if I would have had Power Apps back then and knew this knowledge, this would have been so much better for all the students because I could have actually shared this with them as well. So that's the use case scenario that I'm going for. However, whatever you have for your data, you can see where summing up might be important for you. So let's go over and take a look at my app and then hopefully you can apply this to your future app development. So if we come on over and take a look at my app, the first thing I wanna do is show you my data. Uh, Cause I think it's always easier here. So I just have two basic tables. Uh, the first table that we have here is I simply just have my class and periods. And this time I decided to put different classes and periods rather than just my name and also the subject. So that is one of my tables. Uh, and this table could be in common data services, it could be a SharePoint list, Excel, whatever you wanna keep your data in. Then my other table that we have is my student score logs. And on my student score logs, I keep track of the date, how they got their points, how many points they earned, the name of that student, as well as the class and the period. So those are my two tables. Those are the only two tables I'm going to be working with in this application. So now let's go and take a look at the app. So on my main screen here, I have one gallery that has all of my classes in them and the other gallery that has each individual student score that we've been keeping track of. And let's just say we'll keep this very basic to start with. I wanna know all the points over all time for all the classes and all the students. So what I've done is I've made a text label right here called all points. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a sum. So to get this sum, we're gonna zoom on in we're gonna say and, we're gonna use the sum function. And the sum function, I could just pass in hard-coded numbers right here if I wanted to, but I want to feed it a data source. And so all of my points are being kept over here in that student scores log table. So we're gonna type in here the student score logs table, and then comma, now we can actually feed it the expression, what column? And my column is called points. And we'll close that off. And in just a second, once it runs, there we go. We have 115 points total. And we could validate this. So if you want to slow this down and pause this for the individual screenshots to make sure I'm doing it correctly, uh, I promise you it does add up to 115 though. So that is your basic sum function. Feed it a column and it does it all. However, I want to take it one step further. What if I want to know the class points for each individual class? Well, I can do that because in my student scores, I'm keeping track of the name of the student as well as what class they were in when they got the points. So now what I really wanna do is take that column of points but filter it down based on the individual classes. And with the sum function, you can do that. It's just the table we feed it now has to be filtered down based on some kind of column. And because I do have in both of these uh, tables, I list the class period um, as well, sorry, the class and the period. I didn't put the subject over here with the student scores, but they can filter down based on class and period. So let's take a look at the filter command as well as the sum command used as one. So we're gonna zoom on out here and we're gonna go back into the app and I'm gonna come on over here. So this is just my classes gallery and I've added in a text label called class points. Now what I wanna do is add onto this or attach to it, um, concatenate, smush them together, so to speak. I want to bring in the sum function again. So we're gonna say let's sum, but this time the table I feed it has to be filtered down. So I have to start off with the filter command. And so we're gonna say let's filter out our table. What table am I trying to filter? 
Well, I'm trying to filter down my student scores table. So <clears throat> I need to come on in and put student scores because that is where the scores are coming from. So even though that table is not part of this gallery, that's going to be okay. So I'm going to say I want to filter down the student score logs table, comma. How do I want that filter to, to act? Well, I need the class and period from my classes table to equal, or sorry, my class and period from my student score logs table to equal the class and period from this gallery. So to reference the class and period from this gallery, I'm just going to say this item class and period. So we're going to come on over and we're going to say this item, I'll zoom out just a little bit again, and now we'll come back and zoom in. So this item dot class and period. So now I will wrap that up and now I have filtered down the actual table. Now I can now feed it in the actual column that I want it to do the summarization on. And I want it to do it on the points. And then we'll close that off with the parentheses. And in just a second here, notice what we now have. I now have, and we'll go to the play, the actual class points for each period. So Browning period two, if we add up these first, I have these sorted. Negative five and 10 is 15, plus 20 is 30, uh, 35. Actually, let me do that again. Negative 5 uh, and 10 is 5. <laughs> uh, 20 and 5 is 25. Subtract 10, and that puts us at 15. And so this is working picture perfect. So we just filtered down again. What I did real quick is I took this. I said I want to do a sum, but not on the entire points column. I want that table before it does the sum to filter down based off the match of the class and the period. So. Right away, we've done two different sum functions. Well, what else can you do with the sum function? Well, let's just say in this application as well that I wanted to keep track of all the late homeworks. I just want a tally of all the late homeworks for, for every single class. And I want to have that at the very end. So I'm going to come down here to my, uh, I have a doo doo doo, and actually it's called screen points. This, I'm just going to rename this real quick. This is going to be screen late homeworks. And what I've done here is I've just put in um, a few different inputs. So these are just on the insert ribbon, I've just done some text inputs. And I've made three of them. And on all three, I've come on over and took out the default, so no values to start with, because we're going to feed the values. And I've put in the hint text just to let somebody know what they're supposed to be typing in here. So now what do I want to actually do with these? Well, after people type in their numbers, I want to get an actual late homework count. So on my late homework count, this is where we can also use the sum function again. So this is a text label that I've put in, and it says today's late homework count, and now I need to sum. Well, we know that we can sum with columns, but we can also sum with actual text input controls. We just feed the input.text, we say how many of them we want to sum, and it will sum it up for us. And it's a very easy formula here. So we're going to go with sum. And now let me go back and reference what I actually called these inputs. But I believe I just called them inputs uh, first period late, second period late, third period late. Perfect. Made it nice and easy here. So we're going to say sum input. There's first period late. Now notice that's a control. We need to actually get the text out of that control. So we're going to put dot text. All right, that's the first number we want to sum. Then we're just going to repeat this. I want the second period late input box, and I want the text from it as well. And then finally, you figured it out. We're going to get the third period, and we're going to bring the text out of it as well. And now when we come on down here, nothing is showing because we don't have any values in here because I have the default value set to zero. But let's see when we actually play this and put some numbers in. So let's say first period had two late homeworks. Notice we already have a two. We've got a four. And then let's say first third period had one. So we have a total late homework count of seven. So it's a nice, easy visual to display here. Let's take it one step further. What if I wanted to actually use that data and put it in somewhere? So you might have a use case scenario where you have your end users put in a whole bunch of numbers and then you need the sum of those numbers put into your data source. You want to submit it back somewhere. Well, how do you do that? So we're going to take it a step further. We're going to do what's called a collection. 
What a collection does is it makes a table in the background for you, for you to be able to, re um, to reach out to anytime you want to bring those values into something. So I've made a button here. We'll get back out of the preview. So I've made a button here called Collect Late Homework. And in order for this collection to work, what I need to do, again, is I'm going to reference the sum function. So <clears throat> on the Collect Late Homework, I want when somebody actually hits this button for some kind of action to happen. So I'm going to come over here with the button selected, and we're going to go to the On Select. And now what I need it to do is I want it to collect, I want it to store this sum for me. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say, let's make a collection, and I'll zoom on in. So we're going to collect. And when you make a collection, you decide what do you want to call it. So I'm just going to call it COL late homeworks, comma. And now we say, well, what do we want to collect? What are we trying to store in here? Well, I'm trying to store in the sum of all of those input values right over here. So we're going to go back and use that same sum formula from before. So I'm going to say the input of first period late dot text, comma, the input of second period late dot text, comma, and input of the third period late dot text. And then I'll zoom in here just so you can take a look at this again. So we're going to collect all of these. We're going to take the sum of it. And again, you might be saying, Matt, why isn't it working right now? You have all these red lines. Well, because I still need to close off the collection statement. So now I'm going to put another parentheses in here. And now we will actually store these sums once we hit the button. So if I go to the view ribbon right now, if you go to view and you go to collections, this is where you will see all of your collections. So it said, hey, you've made a collection, collect late homeworks, but you haven't executed anything. There's no value in there. Well, the minute I come over here and I hit play and I say, let's collect the late homeworks, all right. We'll come out, let's go back to the collections, and notice we now have the value of seven. So now I can use that number for some other reference later on in my app. So let's finish this app off and actually do it. Also, if you're enjoying this right now, just to let you know, if you take a look in the comments below, there is a code if you want any kind of formal training on-demand learning where we have classes set up for you that go module by module over Power Apps, Power BI, Excel, Azure. Uh, take a look below. That's uh, what we do at Pragmatic Works, uh, and you get a lot more of this in a more structured class. So just say comment down below. All right, so let's come on over, and we'll take a look here. We'll go over now. So where do I want to use this? Let's say I wanted to actually store these late homework records. Now, I don't have that in this data source for now. I didn't just take a time to set up a separate table. But just let me show you how this would work. So as I was making this video, I said, well, let me add one more piece to it. But I didn't want to go and change all of my data tables around. So I have a form over here. And this form is just simply attached to uh, my class's uh, information. And you saw my classes. All I'm keeping track of are the classes and the subject. Uh, again, this would be some other table I would have created off onto the side called my late homework table maybe. But what we want to do is I'm just going to put in some random field into this form. Um, I'll go with one of theirs that they always have, uh, time zone rule version number. Again, this would really be in a real proper data source, a separate column called late homeworks. So I'm just going to add this. And now if I want to pre-populate this with one of my values, I am going to have to change the control type. So instead of edit number, which is where we would actually type in that number ourselves, we are going to come on over and actually let me get off the screen here and zoom on in for you. So instead of edit number, I'm going to change this to allowed values. All right. So I've changed it over to allowed values. Now I want to pre-populate this with the actual collection number. So what we have to do, and anytime you make a form and you want to change the default behaviors of that form, you have to unlock the individual data cards. So I'm going to come on over, I'm going to do a right click on it to unlock. So now it is unlocked. And now I'm going to come to the actual data, the value that's within it. So the data card value. And then once I'm in here, I'm going to come on over into the items. And this is where we are going to take out the items and we are going to put in here our collection, collect late homeworks. And notice what happened right away. 
it puts in that number seven. So now the last step all I would have to do is on this form put a submit button that says submit the form back to the data source and then that number would be submitted right back. And if you want to take it one step further, after you submit, on that submit button you would also have another button called clear collect, another action called clear collect, where it would then clear out your collection so it would start back at the zero. Or you could also put that on some separate button. Um, and just one last thing, we could put on the collect late homework button, instead of collect, we could put in the formula called clear collect. And what that does is if there was a number or if there was a value there before you do the collection, it clears it out first and then it puts it in here. So that's a few different ways that you can use the sum function. Again, Power BI, we use sum all the time, uh, but Power Apps does sums as well. So again, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like, like video, comment, subscribe. Again, if you want uh, a discount on some of our formal training, take a look below in the comments section. Uh, and let me know what you want to see in future videos.